just like that, it's the end of the 2023 slash 2024 season. It's the last Geary Cast podcast of the season, and it's awards night. You're listening to the Geary Cast, a part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. I'm Nick Bell, your compare for this evening, and I'm joined by my lovely Geary Cast colleagues for one last time as we're going to award out some brilliant prizes to some fantastic players this season. So I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Chris Marquez. Hi, everyone. One last time before we go on holiday. Exactly. We're, we can almost smell the beach. Is that the right saying? Smell the beach? Taste of cocktails, whatever it might be. Right. I'm joined by Luke Chambers, who's always on holiday. He's just back fresh from Porto. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm okay. It is uh, election night here in the UK, so I am buzzing. I am buzzing. But that's a different podcast. And from Madrid, Alex Ashmore. Congratulations, the recently graduated Alex Ashmore as well. Double delight for him. Not only has he uh, received an award himself, but he gets to divvy some out as well. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. I was thinking the other day, actually, it's gone like that. My extra graduation to this graduation and a slightly different uh, host of this year's graduation. It was Florentino Perez instead of the former UK ambassador to the Ukraine. Both, you know, very interesting people. But yeah, slightly different, but doing very well. Thank you. Yeah, slightly different in their own respects, which sounds quite good. And uh, yes, it will be uh, obviously very new. Welcome to the world of work, Alex Ashmore. You finally ended your education. <laughs> Time for a slap of reality of what the rest of us <laughs> have been doing for the last 15 years. Uh, <laughs> but we, we will keep an eye on your progress with with interest um so yeah as i've said this is the giri cast awards you may have noticed last season we didn't do one of these it was quite hard to uh, do an award show for the shit show we had last year but this season has been absolutely brilliant we've achieved promotion we've done it in good fashion and we've got something to celebrate so uh yeah i suppose guys just before we get into the different categories and award ceremonies um maybe we could sum up our seasons a little bit. Chris, what have you thought of this season as a whole? Mm, shit with a beautiful ending. <laughs> shit with a beautiful ending. <laughs> maybe maybe a bit happy with the vibes of the, of the award show, Chris, maybe. Chris, but, you know uh, we got promoted, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but I don't think, when I look through the season, I don't look, it was that great. We had a good start. Then we went for a big period. For a long period, we went uh, shit with a lot of draws. And then um, we reached the playoffs with, with some, well, luck maybe or not luck. I mean, we almost lost our spot to get to the playoffs. Uh, and then we got to the playoffs and then it was magic. It was magic, to be fair. Very much magic. It was never in doubt, though, was it, Luke Chambers? Just to bring us back around the uh, the old happy train. No, I dare say the season's been a bit of the, the good, the bad and the beautiful. I mean, when you think about it, we had two, two unbeaten runs of, what, 14 and 15 games or something. But I'm very much like Chris in terms of it never really set us on fire. But the ending, we've got the main goal. We're back in Segunda. So, yes, but we've got... With the happy. unbeaten ones... A lot of draws in it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where we, it would maybe a bit prolonged the uh, the unbeaten spells. Well, I, I turned to Alex Ashmore for some joy. Alex Ashmore, what did you think of this season? Personally, this season, from I mean, more from a personal point of view and a Malaga point of view, it's been fantastic. You know, starting off, obviously, I moved back to Spain in October, and you know, being this close to Malaga, two hours on the train, and I'm down to a game being able to go whenever I like, really. And then no, from... We didn't ask about your personal <laughs> life. We asked about the Malaga season. No, because... I know. I know. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And yes, it would be different because I. it's my first season as season ticket holder. So, of course, it's much more beautiful then. Yeah, you could have said that. <laughs> and we're winning games. And we're winning games. We're all football. happy. I'm looking at football-wise. No. I, so, I mean, from a football point of view... I enjoyed it. I think, you know, to play some new teams that we've never played before. And obviously no one wanted to be down at this level. We all wanted to stay up last season, but you've got to take the positives where we are. You know, this was the first season the Geary cast was an accredited media. 
at the football and you know to be able to produce content like we did at the stadium it was you know fantastic and yeah i think both on uh from a giri cast point of view and a football point of view it was a very enjoyable season and hopefully next season is more of the same yes i'm very much on 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 that train of thought as well with you alex i think you know from my perspective yeah it was shit that we got relegated but i'm used to getting relegated i'm a blackpool fan so i've been here before but the fact that we got to go on this kind of adventure would be the way i describe it where we've been to fucking some bizarre places some strange teams but we've met brilliant people we've seen some very interesting football at times but even at the club as well from the club perspective it kind of needed it to get on to an even keel in my opinion the fucking sausage machine of segunda that was just basically you were getting battered every week and you were maybe surviving relegation or just missing out on relegation or being turgid in mid table, um, you know, for a long period of time, it was a bit like, well, oh, yeah, fine. This season, it's been right. Well, we're, we've been at the top, we've been in the top four all yeah, season. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's been exciting. And I said this on the previous pod as well. For me, this is the best season I've had following Malaga for a, for a long yeah. time. Let's put it that way. Yeah, um, I said it as well. So, yeah, definitely. I, I, I was just looking football wise, like, yeah, I was saying with Chris, and, and that's a <laughs> bit of a difference. Because I, as well. this, this is this has been my favorite, yeah. my favorite ever Malaga season. Why? Because I think it's it's a very nice league. We went to very humble stadium, played against very humble teams. Um, I think the passion for Malaga has never been so big. We never had that that away following to away matches through all out of Spain. So that is amazing. But if I look football wise. I think with the team we had and the players we had, I think don't think during the season, not during the playoffs. I think during the season we weren't good enough. Mm, the thing I is, think- as well, guys, it's been a massive learning curve for all of us. Like we've learned about teams what we barely knew existed in Segunda. Like you said, Nick, it's so easy to find out information about everything else. This season we've had to dig deep and really learn about the actual team what we're playing not just us but all all the Geary cast fans all the Malaga fans it's been uh, it's been it's been like you said a, a great season and just a very interesting season yeah absolutely and I very much agree with Chris's sentiment as well that it's kind of rekindled the passion for me and for the rest of the fan base as well you know like it's it's just sparked something which and then going into Segunda now means that we're going into Segunda with optimism rather than thinking oh again it's that fucking turn it around and see who could be or we might not be good at this we might not do that it's 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 all blue sky things at the minute for me which is quite yeah. good but, but, uh, but if you ask me did you enjoy going to la rosaleda on the sunday free sunday watching malaga draw against i don't know what team let, let's say intercity no i i to be honest i i don't have a feeling of well i i'm going happy back to my house and have a great rest of my sunday Try flying two and a half hours to get beat against <laughs> Alpiano. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, that you know I mean? it's, it's those things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Try turning up to Alcayano on the back of what a fourteen game unbeaten <laughs> run going. We're the dogs, bollocks boys, mates. Watch this, and then getting turned over by people wearing the worst <laughs> fucking kit in the league. That's that's real uh, dedication. But um, but anyway, it sounds like we've all had a good season. So um, so we she, we shan't leave this to further ado uh we've got awards to to hand out we've also got some um brilliant little clips from matt harrison who sadly couldn't join us tonight he is off uh back in back in the home country he is he's back in wales um so he's doing his little tour around bristol cardiff swansea and things like that but he's taken time to send us some videos to support what we're going to be talking about so as i said without further ado the first award of this evening we're going to start on a bad one we're going to start on a bad one so then we can get up to the crescendo of the good ones chumbo of the season now we'll play matt's first because matt's pre-recorded and then we can have a chat after that so here is matt harrison's chumbo of the season Good day, everyone. I'm Matt Harrison. Um, apologies, I can't be there to do the award show. Um, obviously, we didn't do it last year because it was really shit. Um, but when we've done it the other seasons, they've always been one of my favourite things to do. So I have gate clashing <coughs> via 
this video um, and it's wanted and in the home of my other football club and um, I've got some Spanish well I was going to say I've got some Spanish beers but actually um, it's not Spanish it's a bit shit um, Cruz Campbell seems to be out of the as well which is interesting but um, um, speaking of shit um, the first award I'm going to do my nomination for is the Chumbo I was just thinking about this, and I, I really, really struggled. Because obviously, we got promoted, and it's all positive. And you know, there's been some players who, who said have gone through rough patches, like Danny Lorenzo, David La, Ru La Rubia, even Kevin, you know, I can say that. But they've all had good seasons, I'd say, in the end, you know, like, like, overall. And then one name just was like, oh, of course it's him. Um, we give him the number nine shirt at the start of the season. He did not live up to that other line and shirt. Um, he doesn't play for the club anymore. Um, so a lot of him again. He's my jumbo of the season. Um, even with him being a contender for perhaps the moment of the season, a lot of touch. He was shit, wasn't he? So he's my jumbo. A lot of him to So Matt Harrison's is Lauren Zuniga, despite the fact of the touch from God that he did at the Nice Bowl. Um, some some notable mentions in there for Lorenzo and La Rubia and even Kevin, but let's not say that one out too loud. So uh, I now turn to you, Luke Chambers. Who are you going for for your chumbo of the season? Well, I dug deep a little bit, and I think mine may be a little bit controversial, but there's within reason. So my chumbo is actually going to Dione. Oh, and this purely is we we signed the record goal scorer at this level. I was very excited. I think we're all excited. We all had him in our teams, barring one person. Mr. Alex Ashmore actually chose Roberto. But I just thought, with us signing the leading goal scorer, I've expected so much more of him, whether that's been because he's been played out of position or asked to do a job. I don't know, but unfortunately, it's Dione. However, he, had, he ended on a massive, massive high, getting us that all-important goal in Tarragona. It is. You choose choosing the man who got us back into the game in Tarragona. Oh, no, it really, honestly, he killed me. I just, I didn't, I didn't want to go for the uh, the simple option of. I'm not going to say who because I imagine one of you might have him. Well, well, we'll certainly see. Chris Marquez, who are you going for? Is it as controversial as <laughs> Dioni? I'm really surprised because how much goals did Dioni score? Eight. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Nine. Exactly. Wow. It's not a great turnout, is it? Yeah, it's not bad. Very bad, to be honest. Hey, hey, it I'm, was harsh, he, don't get me wrong. I just didn't want to go for the obvious. He scored, <laughs> he scored, one, alone. <laughs> he scored one of the two most important goals in the whole season, probably. Uh, Alex. Well, I can't go with Dioni. I'm going with uh, Aviles. We just didn't see enough of him. Too easy. Yeah, I didn't think we saw anything, to be fair. He turned up with his shirt inside his shorts and uh, <coughs> didn't provide anything. Uh, that's, so that's two of Malaga's number nines this season on the Chumbo uh, hit list. Uh, Alex Ashmore, who are you going for? See, this is a toss-up for me between the two number nines. And obviously, Lorenzo Zuniga is one of the youngsters that's come through at the club and we were kind of you know, originally hoping for, for better things. And Javier Aviles, on loan from Leganes, really didn't ever get going. You know, I, I don't think he... I think he got one assist, maybe, and played sort of 10 games, that sporadic appearances, whether it's off the bench or, or starting. Um, but I have to go with Lorena Zuniga, and I say this quietly, but I actually don't think I've seen a player fail to live up to expectations as badly as he did in a while. And I know the expectations at the beginning of the season weren't that high, but from what, you know, from when he was coming through and people were saying, you know, this guy could be quite good, he's really fallen off a cliff. And yeah, he's my chumbo for this season. I, I think, Alex, why I didn't choose for him, because he didn't play the full season for Malaga. That's one reason. The, no, touch, yeah, less. the touch of God. Yeah, but he ended the season. The touch of God. <laughs> And I think if you're a player from Leganes, coming to Malaga is different than being a talent which never uh, being a talent 
where the talent never came out. I mean, can Aviles is already a fourth player. You know what I mean? Can I just say as well, guys, the reason I didn't go for Zuniga and Aviles is because they didn't play a full season. So I felt yeah, it yeah. might have been a little harsh. True. Just back in the well, Dione yeah. shout up. Well, we've got, so so we've got any, other, any other player you could name. There is one more. Yeah. Well, I I even I writ out a whole thing about this player, but I'll let Nick go first and then I'll just say this other player. Well, we've got two two votes for Lauren Zuniga right now, one for Aviles and one for Dione. A very much of a theme in strikers who failed up to live up to their potentials this year. I'm going for the international man of mystery. And that is Senor Juan Hernandez, yeah, who That's the guy. turned up at the start of the season. We didn't know much about him, but he had good pedigree. Uh, played fairly decent against Castle on away. I think he scored against either Granada, uh, Recreativo Granada or Atleti Bay. One of the B teams anyway. And then we've not fucking seen him since. I think he came off the bench like twice. Um, so again, in terms of him being a more experienced player, we saw the impact that... David Ferrero had, for example, when he came in, he was just a no man to me. Again, he was just a waste of a, of a squad space. He was a waste of salary uh, for, for for this one. So for me, I'm going Juan Hernandez every single day. That, that was mine. That was mine. But I thought everyone were going to go for the same. I thought I'm, I'm going to mix it up. <laughs> do we do we still have him next season? I, yes. I think so. Yeah, I think he is contracted to next year. Yeah, so it'd be interesting whether we uh, we move him on for. For minimal cash, but um, but this is the law. As much as I, as I think he was a chumbo this season, the votes have been cast. It is uh, two votes for Lauren Zuniga. So, Mr. Zuniga, now of uh, the parish of Real Madrid, say you are chumbo of the season. And I think, to be fair, most people listening will probably agree with us on there. So I now move on to the young player of the season, and I think this is going to be quite interesting because we have got. So many to pick from. But the first person choosing is Mr. Matt Harrison. So, award two, as I walk down past the sea, away from Mumbles, back towards Swansea City Centre. I'm going to go visit the university campus, actually, and see my old hangout spot. Um, and then, actually, again, what a great link I've got here, because that's when I was in my youth, um, being formed into the Matt Harrison you see before you. Um, and I think we're going to do Young Player of the Year, um, which is a tough one, actually, because there's been so many, like, obviously, we've relied on youth this year, you know, even, like, Danny Lorenzo, La Rubia, Kevin, are all quite young. We won't count them, because they're sort of a little more senior. Um, so, yeah, Dizan Moreno, who's obviously brilliant for a bit. Um, who else have we had? I think I was going to say something. Mario at the start was really good. Um... I feel like the list is a little high tam for the flipping act. Well, good to see for two games. Um, and obviously, I guess the one I feel like I should be saying, Antonito here is my winner because of what happened at the end. But actually, my winner, the one that's the most exciting, is, um, and I think he's a Giri Cast favourite as well, is uh, Aaron Ajoa Maloney. Um, the El Dense game when he came off the bench. Um, and we knew a bit about him, but we didn't know that much about him. Well, I, I, I didn't, certainly. Um, I'd only found out about him about two or three months before when I found out one of my students had played against him for Armenia. And fucking hell, that game was exciting when he came on against El Dense. And then in like some of the some of the other games we saw, he was quite a feisty character as well. Um, and again, we talked about Antonito in the playoff final, but... You know, he arguably had as big an impact with that shot, which set up Dione's goal. So, yeah, my younger player of the season, and he's a Geary as well, is Aaron Ajoa Maloney. And respect to Mr. Matt Harrison there. Full naming Aaron Ajoa Maloney, which is what we do on the Geary cast as well. N none of this... Sure in the background on the bench, he did a really great, great job being there. It's a lovely cameo, and if you are watching this on YouTube, Matt is taking us around some lovely parts of South mm. Wales as well. Mm. Like the weather isn't as good as the Costa del Sol, <laughs> but it's a beautiful part of the world. The uh, link was so, so cool going to his old university, speaking of his youth, whilst announcing the young player of the year. Whilst doing it, whilst, whilst we see the Matt that, that like is now the one that we, that we all adore. Then now, now the thing is gone. 
<clears throat> else people would think, wow, these guys plan it all very professionally. <laughs> now that you said it, you acted like surprised. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely didn't send these videos through two minutes before we were due to record this this, this, this evening. But um, but yeah, so Aaron Atromaloni gets one. I think I agree with Matt. He's really burst onto the scene. Um, you know, obviously vital in that win against um Tarragona in the playoffs as well. So um I, I support that sentiment. Chris Marquez, who are you going for for your young player of the year? This was one of the two most difficult uh awards for me this week. I've been thinking about this one the whole week uh -huh. uh, because there were some quite a few talents. Isa Merino, you have uh, Arocho Amloni, you have Antonito, and it's hard to choose because uh, between Antonito and um, Aronacho Maloney because although Antonito scored the most important goal of the season we didn't see much of him throughout the season and if you look at the goal I mean he was just a guy in that position the ball just came for his feet and he didn't even hit it very well because if I, I've seen it a thousand times, it goes, in my opinion, from Antonito, he hits another player of Nastic who is in the way and then touches the, the net. So is it a great goal? Not really, is it? No, but an important one nonetheless. Is it, is it, does he deserve it? Maybe not as much as Aaron Acho Maloney, but I'm going to give it to Antonito because it is the goal was so important. Yeah, and I think with Antonito as well, is he's shown his potential, and I think this is the, the the big thing for the young players this season is that they were never going to be the front. The headline act, basically, they, they were. They're there very much as a support, and it's what support they bring, which is quite important. And again, I agree with Antonito. That goal is obviously very, very important as well. But he's always been there as an as an option, as a you know coming into midfield or playing out wide. He's been a great addition to the to the squad this year, and obviously, you know, he's still been playing for Malagueño as well. So, yeah, I, I agree with that one too. Uh, Luke Chambers, who are you going for? Yeah, I've got to agree with what Matt said regarding Aaron Acho Maloney. Um, when we have seen him, I think he's maturing game by game. I mean, if we look back to the Real Sociedad start in the, the Copa del Rey, mm -hmm. 16 years old coming up against La Liga of Stars. I mean, they didn't mess around with their team. He entered it like a true pro. Tarragona, we spoke about it last week. For me, he changed the game when he came on. Mm -hmm. Effectively, a huge reason why we went up. Like Chris has just been saying, yes, Antonito scored the goal. But Aaron Machoa really, really took the game and changed the way that we played in that game. And I'm a huge Antonito fan. But for me, it's Aaron Achoa Maloney. I mean, a big pre-season for the lad now. I think if they can beast him up a little bit, we've got a, a real talent in our hands. Yeah, so two for Aaron Achoa Maloney at the moment. Alex Ashmore, are you going any different? Yes, I am. And now, back in August, specifically on the 18th of August, I said something that... Well, brought a lot of controversy and Nick was very surprised by what I said. So I'm just going to play this before I explain my choice. Mm -hmm. Because last season he played uh, for Barca B at this level and you know, played 34 times, only scored six. But I think that experience of him playing at that level will have helped him no end. Uh, I think, you know, obviously he's played a bit in Segundo, he played second. So I said that back in August, everyone doubted me. Everyone was <laughs> not going to do it. He's going to be, you know, like dear, and he's going to play 30 games. He's going to score six goals. But he arguably, along with one other man who, this is the reason why Roberto isn't getting my player of the season, because there's another man who did, you know, slightly better. But I am giving my young player of the season to Roberto Arguably single-handedly won us the playoffs, scoring countless amounts of goals throughout the season and in those four games. And 
Although, yes, he had his moments where he wasn't on the best goal scoring form. And, you know, if he was maybe a better, if he had a bit better ball controller, he was that little bit better in some of those areas. He could have got 30. But there's no surprise why he's attracting interest from some of the big clubs around Europe. So, Roberto is my young player of the season. Alex, I, I think nobody chose him because we don't see him as a. <laughs> yeah, this will be my point now, right? So just thirty-three. Side, sidebar team, just let's all just all whisper amongst ourselves. At, at what point do we stop being a young player and start being an old player? I was thinking twenty-one. 22. He's twenty-two, and Matt said, "Hi, Tam, who also is twenty-two." But being player. honest, if if twenty if twenty-two is the age that someone is not a youngster anymore, you said twenty-one, right, Nick? I, I would say 21, but I also agree 22 is very young, but I'm saying this as a almost... I think, I think he, you can't count him in as a as a youngster anymore because he already played two or three seasons in 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 professional football or semi-professional. I'm sticking by it. He's sticking <laughs> by it. He's going with Roberto, the evergreen Roberto. Um, 22-year-old Roberto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is which is incidentally older than is it older than you, Alex? Or are you want younger than? Oh, um, you yeah, you think I am. I'm 24. <laughs> ah, you old see. man, you <laughs> oldie. You, you you wouldn't qualify for Young Player of the Year. Um, I'm going to go a bit outside on this one, uh, and he was mentioned earlier by Matt, and I'm going to go with Diego Murillo. Now, I kind of caveated that early on by saying that the role of a youngster is not just to be this player that comes and be the headline actor. He doesn't burst onto the scene and make himself the number one. The role of the youngsters, for me, have got an important job of pushing your first team players as well. Now, Murillo came in at an important time when we suffered from bad injuries, especially in the centre-back area. Nelson Monte was out for a while. Juan De was injured. So it was just him and Einar at the back. He performed very, very well. But then I think as well, when we got those players back in, for especially this latter part of the season, he has helped push them, help them perform better. I think Musa has also done that. The amount of competition we've got at centre-back is crazy. But for someone so young and so fresh to come out here and perform the way he did, especially like away in Ibiza and places like that, I for me, he's my young player of the year. A very, yeah. a very good head on, old, on young shoulders. Do you know how old Mario is? I thought he Muriel, was what? I thought he was dead young. Muriel's, Muriel's 23 years old. No, he's <laughs> old, Alex. I think 21 is the cutoff, me. I don't think Roberto. 23 is the cutoff. 23 is the cutoff. I thought he was a you, you might right. as well give it to Sergio Pelletier. Yeah. <laughs> right. Firstly, right. I changed my mind then. I thought he was a youngster too. So I did not know he was 23 years old. I didn't until last night. <laughs> Why didn't you cut me off earlier, Luke? I've just done my fucking Independence Day speech. Well, well done for ruining it at the best moment, Luke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. 23 is the cut off. So Roberto is absolutely fine. 23 is very young, by the way. Very young. <laughs> I have to say something because, in general, I think we haven't seen enough of the, uh, of the youngsters. Leaving Roberto and Murillo out. I expected a bit more of Aldi. There is talent, Antonito is talent. Um, and of course, uh, Ochoa Maloney is talent. But I spe expected a bit more of them. Yeah, I think like plays like Isa Marino, for example, like I think he did well, but I would like to have seen him, especially in times when we were, were maybe on the fence a bit about Hanaro, for example, and Molina. You know, he's a clearly a talent. You know, the fact he's getting called up for the Spain on the 19s at his age and in the league he plays in says a lot about that. But yeah, I can agree with that in a little bit. So um yeah, under 23s, you're all fine. There we go. Blanket <laughs> coverage. Roberto's in. That's cool. No worries about that. Um, and we'll just brush over that one. We'll edit that bit out. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> A day like today, Nick, you're changing your tune like so many other people running this country. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't say him off, Alex. <laughs> it surprises me that I'm the only one. If I didn't choose Antonito, Antonito wouldn't be in the list. Uh, Matt had Aaron Acho Maloney as well. So I think, I think, well, just to put that as uh, out there, Aaron Acho Maloney is the winner. 
He is our crowned young player of the season with two votes. Um, two votes which concluded uh, two very controversial additions from myself and Alex. Um, so next we'll move on to trips of the season. So obviously this means different things to different people. You know, obviously Chris and Matt and Alex all live in Spain. Me and Luke travel over to Spain to uh, to watch the game. So again, there's going to be different caveats here. So Matt's going to come at us with his first uh, nominations. So I think we're on award number three, which... Um... I don't know what you guys are going to do, because I think I said it's going to be Trips of the Season, which obviously is uh, sort of my remit, um, but you know, feel free to engage, um, I did a lot of trips this season, um, I'm now, you know, we're talking about good places, I'm in, I'm in um, the famous Athens Tavern in Swansea, which um, you see sometimes I go viral because it's... Um, has different like headlines above the door. Um, nothing exciting today. Um, it's chess night, um, so it just says chess night. Um, so three trips. I'll keep this short because this is sort of my one, and I don't want to waste your time. Best three trips of the year. Number three is a toss up: Granada or Linares. Take your pick. I'm going to Linares though, just because that was the first one, and we took almost three thousand fans, and it was a bit like. Oh yeah, this season's going to be fucking mad. Um, obviously, Linares took a lot more. Sorry, Granada took a lot more, but um, yeah, Linares was the sign of the madness to come, I guess. And lovely little town, and it, it did feel like a bit more of an invasion than perhaps Granada, which is obviously a big city. Uh, number two, Alcoyano, amazing little town up in the mountains of Alicante. Uh, it's one of those trips where. You're not going to go to Alcoy unless you go into a football area. I don't mean there's much to see there, tourist wise. Um, but yeah, the great grounds, proper normally ground. We won 3 0. Their fans were amazing. It was really friendly. Um, just a great trip. Great trip. And then, you know, you've got Alicante near by, which I'm not a big fan of, but you know, that, that can be fun too. Um, so yeah, three Linares, two Alcoyano. Um, again, winning 3 0 away, I've not seen that before. Um, I think anyone that's listened to our podcast will know where my number one is going to be. It's Ceuta. Ceuta is the one. Ceuta is the place. Um, brilliant trip, great people, great fans, great ground. Even though we lost, um, obviously there's the adventure of crossing the sea as well. Um, yeah, that was the one for me. Best trip, ticked off, a bit quirky. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go back to enjoying my Gawa Gold. <laughs> Let me know your favourite trip as well. You know, I was the trip guy this year, wasn't I? So, someone should write a book about these trips. Ooh, some lovely foreshadowing from Matt Harrison there, who is very much. I, I literally don't understand this list. <laughs> wow, I don't get it. <laughs> no, he, he, but I think Matt enjoyed it in a different way this year. And I think considering he traveled so much, it must be hard to pick just one. I think that's Not why he gave it. Were in it. I, but no. you know what? So, but, the, but, to fair, but to be fair with Nastic for him, he was in the car for 10 hours because he set off on a Saturday morning. Got to the ground, obviously part of the celebration in the ground, and then he was back on the bus, so he didn't really get to enjoy it the same way that he usually does, like he, when he's gone away to Castellon or up to Vigo or places like that. So I think maybe that comes into it ever so slightly. But we're only going to do one each because we could be here all bloody night if we do our three. three. Because I have three. You can do one. Okay, Chris Marquez is going to do three because he's got three. Oh, he lives in Spain. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, let's get our ones out of the way first and then we'll let Chris go on his monologue. Uh, Luke Chambers, what was your best trip this season? I'm just going to chuck a very quick honourable mention out because I went to Cordoba away. It was uh, my first away game with Malaga. A huge learning curve with my Spanish Peña, like our Ejuela boys. <laughs> but yeah, first class. But there's no other for me for number one. It's Tarragona. 
the way everything happened for myself and Laura, the season to end with the last kick of the game, Malaga getting promotion, and then to be cuddling the players and celebrating and kissing Kiei Perez. Well, yeah, Tarragona all day for me. So Luke's going with Tarragona because he got to grope some players. Uh, <laughs> you know, what, what a fucking story that is, Luke, to be fair. I can see exactly considering you've been across to spain a lot as well this year uh for plenty of home game trips and things like that i can see why that is definitely up there uh, alex ashmore what are you gonna go for and this was tough for me because i've only officially done one away game this season if i'm right i think Real and, Madrid. That, and that was atletico madrid no two then two then yeah <laughs> Real Madrid away, Real Madrid Castilla away, and Atletico Madrid B away. Alex, they're own. not away games. They're not away games. That's in your yeah. backyard. But this is what I mean. So they're they're not really, I guess, you work at one of them. Experience. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I think generally, as a fan, I've only watched. Obviously, I'm a fan watching all the games, but officially going as a fan, I watched the Alcayana game, and you know, I can't. I, the trip was brilliant. It was a lovely weekend, but I felt like the result marred that a little bit. But in yes. terms of the trip and the occasion and what I did and what we did as the Geary cast, I'm going to have to go with Ceuta. I think our first game as an accredited media to be able to sit up in the press box, to be able to go to the press conference after the game, you know, just to get that, you know, foot in the door for the Geary cast. And yeah, uh, it's, you know, it was, it was an honor, really. It was a pleasure. And, well, thanks to Victor, who helped make it happen. Thanks for Chris for kicking, getting that ball rolling with Victor. And, uh, yeah, uh, I think that's my trip of the season. Ceuta at home, although we didn't get the win. We drew one all, but it was good. And also it was the game that the Malaga documentary guys, the glory to grit, grit to glory, glory to grit. <laughs> I'm muddling up my words here. But it was the day they came down for all their filming. So, yeah, I think that was the trip of the season for me. Yeah, when are you being? Slightly unofficial Geary Cast meetup as well, if I remember right, wasn't it? I'm yeah. still waiting for my payment, though. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes, his agent's fees. Uh, I'm going to go, for me, just, just for my own personal perspective, is uh, Atletico, Atletico Baleares at home. Uh, big 3-0 win. Um, I was there with my mates from home as well, and, and, and I brought them out for the Alcayano game first, as I said before. This was kind of like my chance at redemption, thinking, right, don't fuck it up again, Malaga. Uh, let's do something. And the fact that, you know, we'd been winning games by 1-0, drawing a lot, a couple of losses in January. This got Malaga back on track for me. Uh, so this was a, a brilliant game to be at. The atmosphere was great. Nice dinner time, kick off in the sunshine. So, yeah, Balearas for me at home at La Rosa later. Chris, you're three. I went to three away games this season. My number three is Cordoba. Beautiful city, horrible stadium. Not really my thing. Um, it's in the middle of nowhere. The stadium is pretty ugly. Um, number two is going to be Antiqueda. Oh, I thought it was going to be the other way around. No, I because Luke said I was going with uh, Antiqueda. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, Antiquera, I really loved it. Um, and if you ask me for the stadium, I probably go with Antiquera. But uh, my number one was more special to me, I guess. Antiquera was really nice. Uh, the the olive tree behind the goal is amazing. Everything is amazing in Antiquera. The stadium from the outside, it's just a wall. Uh, it's not really a stadium. It's a wall where you think there should be a pitch behind it. You really, it's a crazy place, but the atmosphere, it was really amazing. Antequera and Malaga fans together. No trouble as all as, uh, as they expected because it was a high risk game. It was a very friendship, friendly uh, atmosphere. Really loved Antequera, um, but Granada, is Granada, beautiful floodlights in Los Carmenes, uh, beautiful stadium. And I think the 5,000 Malaga fans 
and uh, and the friendship between the Granada fans and the Malaga fans was also amazing. And the whole day tapas and beers, it was just the perfect, the perfect away uh, match. So I go with Granada. We've got that back now. We've got the proper Granada game. Yeah. We've got rid of Diet Granada and we've got actual Granada to look forward to. So, I mean, uh, it was 5,000 people against the B team away. Yeah. That's pretty Sens impressive. Sensational scenes. Sensational scenes. The, the, was it the grand displacement they were calling it or the big displacement? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a fairly good choice. I don't think there was an overall winner in that one. I think we all... Actually, no, tell a lie. I think Cordoba might have got uh, the most votes in, in that one there. So, really? Um, <laughs> only because you went for three, Chris. If you'd have stuck with one, Cordoba <laughs> would have been nowhere near it. So, no, by default, is, is, by default Cordoba is getting game... game no, game no Cordoba was my number three. This doesn't yeah, you've it. said it. Uh, you've signed your ballot paper. Yeah, it's still it. got two votes as well. No, no, no. Really? No. Home and away. No, no, no. <laughs> no, quarterbacks, no. No. Many options there. Many options there to pick from. But officially on the press release, it will be quarterback away. That's game of the <laughs> trip of the season. Um, we move on to next game of the season, which obviously I think means obviously how Malaga played more focus on. Um. I think, again, this is going to chuck up some interesting perspectives on this. But first of all, we go to uh, Matt outside the Glantaf, which is in his home village back in Wales. Um, so enjoy this little video. So the chronology of these uh, videos might be out of place now. But I've just been told I need to do gold of the season, um, which I think I forgot to do. So apologies. Um, I'm, I'm in my village. I'm out on my, my, uh, my local pub. Um so I'll, I'll just, uh, there's a really loud ma Welshman on the phone behind me as well, so hopefully that doesn't distract. Um, I'm going to go number three, controversially, a penalty. Roberto's penalty in the playoff final. This is the most perfect penalty I've ever seen in my entire life. So that's number three. Number two, Dione against Ceuta, which, you know, came to nothing in the end, but... Um, It was a guy spanking a football and hitting the bar and going in. So that was fun. Number one, probably would have been up there with my moment of the season and one of my favourite goals I've ever seen. Uh, high Tam against uh, against Ibiza. Yeah, well, well, what well, well, a well, goal! Um, I see this guy's conversation as well. Um, yeah, it, that, that's my favourite goal. I think I, I think apart from Morton Nordstrand scoring a screamer of an overhead kick for FC Nordsland, it's my favourite goal ever. So shout out to Hightam and we hope to see you this season. So they're saying you never work with children, never work with animals, never work with Nick Bell after a full day of work and receiving all the videos at two minutes to the podcast real launch. So that was Matt's goal of the season i think so we're going to just maybe switch it up a little bit matt might not get a game of the season at, at this rate to be fair um so we'll go with goals of the season uh luke what have you gone for for your goals of the season well for number three i've gone with don alfonso herrera because who doesn't love a goalkeeper scoring quite an important goal as well number two for the sheer importance and it's a goal that's going to go up be around the club for many many years to come it's Antonito's more for the importance and number one I cannot go anywhere but High Tam's thunder bastard away at Ibiza he brought it down very well then lashed a shot from well outside the area barring in which makes every goal look better so 100% High Tam versus Ibiza High Tam versus Ibiza yeah that was a bit of a thunder bastard like you say uh, Chris Marquez which three goals are you going to go for? I think mm, third, Antonito. It, it depends how you look on it. Is it like most important goals or, or you, do you look at most beautiful goals? I mean, there is no real sense to it, is it? I'm going with Antonito third, Alfonso Herrero second, and you have to go by the beauty of it with uh, with Gaitan. Yes, as well, yeah. 
I think Hightum might come out on top of this, I've been perfectly honest. Alex Ashmore, have you got any different thoughts? I do. So I think for me, I'm going with, so it was a toss up really. I think I've got an idea of my number one. My number three is our first goal against Tarragona in the final at La Roseda, the, the first leg with all the confusion. It, I enjoyed it specifically because it angered them a little bit. And it was nice to see the ref go, no, that's that's a goal, carry on. And I think also it was a really important goal, you know, arguably the most important. You know, it got us off on the right foot. Second high tam. Uh sorry, yes, second high tam, uh, because you know, it's just a wonderful goal. Those points that you look back at the end of the season, you think, you know, if we hadn't got that point, we might not have finished third, we might not have got the favorable semi-final draw against Celta Fortuna, although it was tough. And my top goal, now this is really tough. It was between Antonito's goal against Nastic, which was brilliant. And let me guess, let me guess. And the Celta Fortuna second goal. So, yes. <laughs> it was a toss-up. So, obviously, the Celta Fortuna goal, I think, was, you know, really, yeah, it was bonkers. If you haven't seen the video, go and watch it. But I'm going to go with Antonito because... I don't think I've ever felt that happy. I was going to say in football, uh, in my life, uh, I think that was the peak of life. Maybe Luke Shaw scoring against Italy in the Euros final. But that, you know, we saw the video. Nick and I were going absolutely ballistic. And yeah, well, we, made, we made it onto African TV. So, <laughs> yeah, my goal of the season is Antonito in the 124th as well. In the 124th minute against <laughs> Nasty. De Tarragona to send Malaga up to Segunda. I agree. Yeah, that I is that is my number one. I think I, I'm going to go with that one for my third one because I, I've kind of gone with the emotional part of it. Because as as Chris Marquez said before, was it the best goal you'll ever see? No, but the meaning of it was emphatic. High time against Ibiza, fucking right in the stanchion. No one gives a shit. Um, brilliant goal for me. The only against Ceuta is my favourite. I think aesthetically, the way he came on at half time, we were playing really shit. And the fact he just opened his body and bent one into the top corner showed the quality of the player that he was. We didn't see enough of it this season, but the fact he had that in his locker was was brilliant for me. So I was going with the only against Ceuta from from the start on this one. So um, we've all made in this the uh, the most beautiful goal, guys, as well, which probably goes under the radar. I think it was me and you on the live streams, Nick, when we're a horrible, horrible day at Malia, when it were absolutely pissing it down in La Rosaleda. 80 minutes it took for Malaga to actually play some football. And if you remember right on the edge of the area, some very quick passing, five or six passes. We just really broke the defence down. David Pereira then filled it across the only put it in. In terms of beauty of a goal, that were like mm. a footballing goal. Yeah, really nice and, and and well worked as well. And and like I say, they've been few and far between really this, this season. The goals we've not scored as many as we would like to, but I think pulling something out of the top draw, we have had some belters in there as well. But I think on that vote, high time against Ibiza takes That's the. In my opinion, Ooh. Is it in, in your opinion, I think is it based on opinion or are we doing like how many people? I, I changed because of Alex sold me the, the Antonito goal. Chris, this is, huge. Because, this is no, huge. No, I'm changing uh, Antonito with Haita. Haita. Ah, so it's more unanimous now. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, because For Antonito, me. I never felt the feeling I had after Antonito's goal. No, it I think it's a very saying, beautiful feeling. I think Chris is saying you're changing up Haita, putting Antonito yeah. in, aren't you, Chris? Ah, yeah. so we need we're got sharing got the award. Two, two for Antonito. Two for High Tam and one for Dioni. And High Tam was my second one. Antonito and my Antonito second. was my third. So by proxy, I think High Tam's going to get this one just by proxy. But both brilliant choices either way. I get exactly Antonito thing. I think just the elation. Antonito's going to win an award at some point, I'm sure. Yes, he will. He'll win an award for turning down half a million going to Saudi Arabia, to be fair. So fair play to him. Um, I think I've managed to get this one right now. So hopefully this plays perfectly. But we are going to go back into game of the season. Um, so Matt's going to tell us his now. 
Hopefully, the giant Welsh person has disappeared. But this is Matt's game of the season. And yeah, still from outside my local pub. I used to work here. I literally used to work here. Um, games of the season. Um, I'll just list them quickly. Uh, the Ibiza home game. That was really good. Because uh, Kevin was really good. And then, take your pick, really. Um, the semi-final against uh, Celta B that was mad so I, I'll put that second and I'll put uh, Tarragona at home as the other one because that was a proper battle I wouldn't pick the final the actual proper, proper final because that was too tense but they're my choices I look forward to hearing your guys choices that was very Bob Ross that was <laughs> it was. I, I was thinking that. Has he gone more softly spoken because the giant guy came outside the pub? Yeah, <laughs> he was like, a big guy. He <laughs> was <laughs> a bit of a bit of a unit of a guy, but uh, yeah, he doesn't have that issue in Spain, though, does he? He's usually a lot more more out there, but he is back on home turf. Um, so, you guys, I think we're just going to do one game of the season because we're fast approaching uh, the hour mark. So, Luke Chambers, what was your game of the season? Um, a game purely just. For the elation of the game and like Alex and Chris both said they've never felt this way about a football game before but it's Gymnasty de Tarragona away again just just how to how a, a full season can end with the last kick of the game winning promotion is by far the, the the best feeling in football I've ever had so game of the season is Gymnasty de Tarragona away and I see you nodding as well Alex Ashmore are you going to go for Nastic away I'm not purely because I also it was the happiest moment in my life, but I don't think I've ever been more nervous in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I found it exhausting personally. And, I, I found it too much. I was as, overwhelmed by it. As Matt said, it was just too tense. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I enjoyed it as much as you know I, I could have done. In terms of best game of the season, I it's a difficult one for me. I obviously haven't seen loads of games this season but I've been down to a fair few but I think my best one was the second leg against Celta de Vigo or Celta Fortuna you know to to go into that final to to be you know beating Celta Fortuna that goal the two goals from Roberto you know just a fantastic game and the atmosphere was unbelievable in that game so that's my game of the season lovely choice Chris Marquez what are you going for I'm going with three because I don't care what you all do. <laughs> You're going with, one, I'm going with three. Um, in third position, it might sound strange because we lost the match, uh, but Real Sociedad at home because I think we've played very, very well. Um, second, Celta Fortuna at home. And uh, first is uh, Nastic at home. Nasty go home as well. So a lot in the, the in the playoff games, you know, I think the crowds and the 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 recibimentos and things like that really helped uh, in those games as well, didn't they? Uh, I'm going a bit differently for this one. The, the the game I actually enjoyed the most was anti care at home. I thought that was you know a very good result. I thought we played well and we've been on such a bit of a barren run of poor form that it kind of sparked for us. Uh, Kevin standing on the ball, as controversial as it was. I like to say a bit of showboating from time to time. And I think without this win at home, I don't think we would have had the confidence to go into the following games. Castillo away, I think it was the last game. And then obviously the playoffs. I think this helped put us on a roll, if that makes sense. So I I, I really enjoyed this game. Um, so that was my game of, of the season. Um, moving on to next, an important one. Uh, Biznaga of the season. So this was obviously... Very big, big acclaim here. I think as well, just for that one, Nastic away won quite comfortably. Oh, yeah. Nastic at home, I think it was. Nastic at home won that one, okay. sorry. Um, so that is our game of the season. Um, and Matt has his biznaga of the season to tell us as well. So I'm now walking towards the actual, not my hometown, the village I grew up in, Quaker's Yard, which is quite exciting. Um, it's a little village in South Wales. I'm going to go to my old local where I used to work. Um, but not as exciting as picking on this darker this season, of course. Um, I've got my Malaga hoodie on this time. Um, shout out to Nelson Monte, who was my early contender for players this Naga this season, but um, slightly not as um, 
uh, consistent second last season, but what a season he had. Um, I think Victor Garcia is possibly our most underrated player, so shout out to him. Um, and then, so my number three, it was, a, it was close. It was close to my number three. It was between, um, well, I'll tell you, the guy that missed out was Manu Molina. I think he tailed off slightly. Um, but that first few months of um, 2024, he was superb. But the other guy that was superb was David Ferrero. Um, he is my third. Um, I think we've all said, like, it's so, such a shame he's left. We would not have gone up about him. Brilliant. Uh, number two, Roberto. <laughs> goals, goals, goals. Running, running, running. Roberto, Roberto, Roberto. Um, what a season. Um, I thought he'd do all right in this league. I did not expect this. And number one is our number one, Alfonso Herrero. What a season. If he's not making miraculous saves, he's scoring goals, I guess, in the playoffs. Um, by a distance, our business after the season, I think. Um, and he needs to be captain next season. He needs to be captain. By a distance, Alfonso Herrero. Don Alfonso gets Matt Spidnag on the season. I'd like to say, colour me surprised, but I think we saw this coming from a long bloody way off. He is a huge Herrero fan and already calling for him to be captain next year. Uh, so, Chris Marquez, who are you going for for your Biznaga of the season? Very difficult because Ferreira had some good things. Uh, I mean, everybody contributed to this uh, promotion. Mm -hmm. And I might surprise people with my number three, uh, but I'm going for Einar. Uh, that is surprising. And why? Um, because the match he played against Celta Fortuna and the other uh, playoff matches, I mean, against Celta Fortuna, he was so good. He was like, everything was for him. He impressed me very much that day. So third, Biznaga is for him. Second, for the man who's leaving us to go to Portugal, Roberto. And number one, can't be someone else than uh, Alfonso Herrero. And I think, I agree with Matt, he is a good captain next season. And I mean, he scored a goal. He had the most crazy saves I've ever seen. And I believe he was eight minutes or something outside of his box. Um, I read it somewhere. Somebody said eight minutes. I'm not. I don't know if it's true. Uh, but he was a very long time out of his box uh, with uh, against in the final against Tarragona. Yes. Yeah, so I think all got all very good choices, but ultimately again. The Don taking the tail from Chris there. Alex Ashmore, any different? To be honest, I think, yeah, I think it, there's some really good players in there that I think have had good seasons. You know, the defence has impressed me in many ways. There's been some stuff to improve on in the midfield, but it's also impressed me. I think, yeah, many people, m many players have been up there, but I think there's only really one top three, and it's David Ferreira at three. Like Matt said, the experience, we wouldn't have got promoted without him. Roberto, all I have to say again is just goals galore, really. He was fantastic. And uh, well done to anyone who put them in their, you know, start, starting season 11 back in August, whoever did that. And then... I know, it's for a few seasons, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Number one, I you can't pick anyone else other than Alfonso Herrero. He's the best goalkeeper I've seen at Malaga since Willy Caballero and Carlos Kameni, you know, just unbelievable, you know, stopping left, right and centre. He had those two errors at the beginning of the season. And mm -hmm. from then on, he's looked perfect. And I don't think he'd put a foot wrong. Uh, yeah, he's by far not even like second, even he isn't even in close. So Alfonso Herrero is my biznagger of the season. Three for Alfonso Herrero. Luke Chambers, you chose a controversial chumbo. Will your Biznaga be just as controversial? Potentially not. Number three, David Ferrero. I think without him, we we don't get promoted effectively. Number two, Roberto. We take away the goals. 
just his sheer work rate, playing for the badge, which is obviously a shame as to what's coming out right now. But you can't deny what he's done for the season. And number one, Alfonso Herrero, the best goalkeeper in, in the league by far. El Capitan Di Mi Equipo for next season. Uh, yeah, what a player. What a player, Don Alfonso Herrero. Yes, and I'll, I will echo the sentiments. I think what everyone said here, I think um, I wanted to put Manu Molina in my top three. I'm very much a believer of of, of Manu Molina and, and his contributions, but uh, I agree entirely. Without David Ferreira's influence, what he did on and off the pitch, Malaga don't get promoted this season. Roberto, obviously for his goals, his work rate, his, his, his vibes. I love his vibes as well. He's, he had good vibes this season, but... By a long fucking way, I'm talking hor horizon levels of distance. Uh, Don Alfonso Herrero, he scores goals, he saves goals, and he looks fucking good whilst doing it. Like, I I've never fully appreciated a man with a mustache and a mullet before, but on Don Alfonso Herrero, I'm, I'm digging it. So, uh, yes, unanimous agreement. Alfonso Herrero, biznaga of the season. Um, and not forgetting as well, he is also now the record holder for um, most time without conceding a goal at Primera level. So, you know, also uh, winning accolades everywhere. Um, so finally, we move on to our last category of the awards evening. We're almost there. This feels a bit like the Oscars. Moment of the season. This can be anything on the pitch, off the pitch, personal, not personal. Um, so again, we'll play Matt's. Last one, as he reports, finally from his uh, home village of, I think he said Quaker's Yard, uh, back in South Wales. He is flying to Portugal tomorrow as well for a month, so don't feel too sorry for him being in Wales. Uh, but here is Matt Harrison for the final time of this show and of this season. Well, and then from my beautiful village square, uh, moment of the season, let's go quick fire with this one. Number three, Alfonso Herrero scoring the goal to get us in the playoffs. You don't see goalies score goals. And what a guy to the like, Cool as fuck. Number two, I'm going to say Castellon. First game, um, even though we lost, it felt like something special was happening there. The thing with the fans, it just felt there was an energy there. Um, and it was sort of the start of my like adventure this season. And I'd obviously rush back on the walk, so that's number two. Number three, you know, it's the, it's the final, isn't it? But thought of the goal, thought of the bleak bit. Actually, the, the moment of the season for me was on the pitch after... Um, I'm sure our Gary Cass resident Luke Chambers can testify as well that it was, that was the special bit for me, seeing lots of people I like, travelled with that season and celebrate on the pitch with them, including Luke. Um, that was the best. That was. So some beautiful moments there from, from Matt Harrison. I think this will all be different for everybody. Um, so he, he the, whole, uh, the whole episode, the orator, he went from three to one and now he went from one to three. That's how Matt Harrison rolls. He is a free spirit and you cannot tame him, Chris Marquez. Um, so your three moments of the season, Chris, what, what are you going for? The whole 124 minutes of Nastic de Tarragona. I don't put them in order because I don't know what Matt's order is. So um, I think he went from one to three, right? So one would be Tarragona. No, that would be second. Third would be, I don't know. There's too many to pick from. Yeah. I go with um, the Girikas meetup. It was really great. It was the first time we had the whole squad together. Uh, Luke just joined at that moment. So that was a highlight. Another highlight for me was Alex doing the, uh, the first accreditation of Alex. And uh, and Nastic uh, third, I don't know. It sounded like a Bible verse and the accreditation of Alex. Um, <laughs> but but no, I very much agree with all them. All fantastic moments of this season. Uh, Luke, what are you going for? I think I can guess some, but not all of them. Well, num number three. Uh, Chris has just led me to number three. Basically, I was going for the comedy value of Lauren Zuniga's touch, amazing touch, way it was. But number three, a personal one, just being asked to join the Geary Cast at the beginning of the season. Me, like many of us, have followed the Geary cast for years and fucking hell, what a, I've, I've loved every minute of doing it. So number three is that. Number two, again, uh, I guess an emotional one for us all, just the Geary cast meetups. 
not even just the Gearcast meetups. Every time you fly to Malaga, no matter what game it is, you're always going to bump into people you know. We've all made friends from all over the all over Europe, all over the world through this, and it's just amazing. But number one, it's none other than Tarragona again. The the moment of the promotion, but also to like have that moment, like Matt said, with people who you've learnt to to know and stuff. Chris Mikowski, me Pena, but to celebrate that moment as well with my wife, like an amazing moment. So yeah, Antonito's promotion winning goal. Only put joining the Giri Cast third, guys. What are we thinking about that? That, that doesn't feel right to me. Five going your way. That was hey, your if moment. We got, if we all got paid, it might be different. <laughs> I'm happy to also sign Tony. Luke, here's your uh, here's your P45, Luke. <laughs> Only joking, obviously. All opinion based. Obviously, some lovely words there as well. Thank you, Luke. And um, it's been great to have you this season. A very welcome addition, Alex. Your moments of the season. This and we mean really Malaga cool. ones, not not Real Madrid Champions League final stuff as well. Just <laughs> know, purely Malaga, please. Um, not this meeting is, Jude Bellingham. This is Malaga tough. ones only. <laughs> um, I've had so many, and I feel like uh, I, it's hard to pick an order. You know, there's so many wonderful things that happened. I was speaking to the Glory to Grit guys the other day and saying how wonderful it is to have someone paying attention to Malaga and you know giving Malaga that space in in the documentary area and what a fantastic job they've done so to be able to are you choosing them well i haven't finished yet hang on <laughs> questions about them old horses <laughs> um so yes it just yeah to be able to be a part of their filming process and to help them out with anything i can it's been an honor to to see them do such wonderful work you know, being accredited, accredited as Chris said, you know, being able to ask Sergio Pérez a question, uh, you know, as my first official question as a journalist, uh, that was pretty cool. I think that's probably third. Uh, second, uh, I think generally, it, we've all seen the video, the video of me celebrating Roberto's goal in the second leg of the semi-final, I believe it was, you know, just unbelievable scenes limbs as they say um and before i mentioned the first you know this season just been i think has probably been my favorite as a geary cast you know to have you know luke joining at the beginning of the season to have so many wonderful memories and to you know have our first season where malaga have done well i guess uh if you consider you know, the other seasons generally it was mid-table or fighting against relegation but my top moment has be uh, it just has to be that goal antonio 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 cordero somehow getting it in the back of the net sending us into pandemonium on the stream i, I haven't felt happier in my life and it it was just brilliant and that is probably my favorite moment as a malaga fan let alone you know this season so yeah there you go that's my number one can I can I ask one thing about one thing that that surprises me is that Kevin has told had told Antonito that he would score the winning goal or the I didn't know that actually before the match. For oh. <laughs> Kevin has the gift. Did he? Did he? Crazy, isn't it? So is that why Kevin is that why Kevin played shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I, I'm asking oh, myself: like, Did he only <laughs> said it to Antonito, or did he went to every player separately? You're going to score the winning goal. <laughs> that's that's the, that's the question I have. Uh, but Alex, uh, the glory to grid. Do you want to uh, make some uh, publicity for them still? Well, yeah. No, do go and check out the first two episodes. They're fantastic. Uh, episode three coming out soon, I think. Um, and yeah, it's just fantastic to 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 be able to help them. And yeah. I've told them countless times that I really enjoyed their documentary and it's one of my favourite documentaries I've ever watched. Yeah, because you're in it. Um, yeah, and for my top moments of the season, being on the Glory to Great documentary. No, fuck them, because they didn't ask me to be on it. <laughs> through them. Yeah, me neither. Honestly, <laughs> fuck them. And I was in space. You guys. No excuse. No excuse. Alex, Alex, I have two yeah. more questions. Um, are they now Malaga fans or... Yes, they are. They're well and truly Malaga fans. Um, they would message me 
whenever Malaga were playing and especially in that final, they were all watching our stream, uh, nervously watching along. So I think we've gained four more Malaga fans. Okay. Alex, tell them we will send them a Boccaroni Teddy. Uh, when, are they pay, when, when are they paying? Uh, they are paying when Netflix come along and give them a okay. Big <laughs> okay, because I had a, a, the the biggest part in 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 the whole documentary. Nobody knows, but I got to spend a whole almost a whole day with them. It was great, so I really had a great day. Um, so yeah, Nick. <laughs> Carry on, Nick. <laughs> the last one to uh, tell your three uh, moments. Uh, well, they obviously all pale in comparison to being part of the Glory to Grit documentary. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I think mine were the Gary Cast meetup against Al Keanu. Very, very cool to finally get us all in one space. We've all obviously met each other individually and been in groups at times. But to have all five of us together was, uh, was was beautiful, and to have that picture which now adorns our Spotify pages um, is is excellent. Um, the coming of Manu Molina, I've written down here. I think you know, as a as a pundit of sorts or a commentator on on happenings, and just to foresee the player that Manu Molina would become. And one of us on here was very much against that idea, weren't we, Luke? Um, Nick, you I, do I, mean I, that you do mean football when you say the coming of Manu Molina, don't you? Because we know yes, how yes, passionate I do, you I do, are. I do mean the football version of that. Um, there, there was no, there, there was none of the other version of that either. But uh, <laughs> no, I just generally like as enjoyed watching him play at times, and I think when he finally clicked in around January, um, up until the point where, where he, he suffered a, a loss in the family, I think he was just absolutely unplayable in, in that time. And um, I've enjoyed watching him. And then for me, the top one was the uh, Recibimento before the Celta Fortuna game. You know, being in there with Matt, with all the, um, you know, Malaga fans banging on the bus. Again, I didn't get to go to Nasty each and, and things like that. But for me, just to have that one little feeling in the playoff campaign and being part of it was 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 big. Um, and still trying to fucking wash off the blue from the... Um, <laughs> from the flares, uh, even now, so that was my top uh, moment of the season. So, yeah, I suppose that brings us to the end of it like that. I always had a tear in my eye after that one. Um, I think, I think we all felt a bit of emotion then, too. Yeah, it did feel emotional, didn't it? But, um, I suppose we best wrap up everything now. So, again, as much as we started with opening statements, do you guys want to say anything to the listeners as we finally draw the curtain on this season? I'll just say what I imagine we're all going to say pretty much, but, um, well, I'll let Chris do the thank yous, I guess, but just in terms of myself flying over to Malaga to meet everybody, we, every time we can make it is absolutely fantastic. Again, we've made some amazing friends, which not just for myself, for Laura, but even you four or five guys, part of the Geary cast, like we speak every day. We're like brothers. We barely knew each other a few years ago and it, it really is, the Geary cast is an amazing thing, and Malaga, sporting Malaga, is one of the greatest pleasures of life, especially this season when winning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you echo that sentiment, chaps, below? Yeah, I mean, you know, just a massive thank you to, to, to everyone, you know, Nick, for all the stuff you do with the graphics and, and all the stream stuff, for Luke, all the fantastic work you do on the socials, Chris, all the wonderful work you do helping us with the club, getting us interviews, you know, doing all your graphic work, posting news, uh, Matt, for all the wonderful podcast that he produces on his travels and hosting and, you know, Tony, who will be a big part of our team coming forward and, well, everyone who's helped us on this journey, it's been fantastic and well most of all thank you to everyone who's listened to to have 300 people watching me do a live commentary where it's just me speaking for two hours is, is kind of bonkers uh, that 300 people want to listen to me for two hours um so thank you very much and yeah i look forward to next season when we could go on to bigger and better things and chris the final words of the season belong to you um, thank you make to all the listeners point. because that's the reason why we make the Giri Cost. Thank you for the wonderful Giri Cost team who are always there. It's not always easy because it is a lot of work. And uh, although it seems like we're chatting here for an hour, everybody puts loads of hours in it every day. Uh, always busy, always coming up with ideas, always creating contact. So thank you. 
um, because it's amazing what you guys do. Um, thank you, La Rosaleda fans, for uh, let us being a part of the new uh, magazine. Um, thank you for the Peña Cariuela. Um, I don't know why, uh, but Luke always does thank them, and he didn't, so I will do it for him. Thank you, um, Sport Direct Radio, for uh, three, four beautiful seasons. Uh, an end has come to our relationship. Um, but I really want to thank them because it was beautiful for, the th uh, for three or four seasons. And now we can say we are up for a new thing and that's being on our own. And I think it's good for us to stand alone a bit, go our own way to separate our, separate our ways and for us to be just a geary cost. Thank you uh, a lot to uh, the social sports hub podcast platform, social, another social hub podcast <laughs> platform. I don't know what the name is. I still can't figure it out. Uh, for giving us the opportunity to grow as a, as a podcast and um, yeah, to earn some money with it, although it's it doesn't yeah, even yeah. Nick's, Nick's stream here to Bill. Um, <laughs> and thank you, most important, our listeners. And I said, named you first, but I named you once again. Thank you for being there uh, because without you, there wouldn't be a gear cost. It would be just five, four or five morons talking about football. <laughs> Um, that's still what it is it's just people yeah, listen to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically uh, but now we have a reason to talk um, and stay tuned because a lot is going to change at the Geary Cost from the start of next season yes we have got lots of exciting projects in the pipeline we're obviously back in Segunda, so back in amongst the big boys. And I, and I don't sleep on this whatsoever. This is going to be the best Segunda season ever. There are some massive yeah. clubs in there, huge following, some great trips. No B teams, fuck yes. And it's going to be brilliant. We, like I said, we've got some other stuff we're going to line up. We're going to carry on with, with live streams. We're going to be bringing you two pods a week. We're going to be absolutely brilliant out yeah. there as well. So, uh, yes, and again... Nice. Fuck off, we're going on holiday. <laughs> yes, time for a holiday. Uh, we'll be still be keeping you up to date over socials and we'll be back just in time for the start of the new season. I know from Matt Harrison's perspective as well, he will also like to say a big thank you for everybody for listening this year. I want to say thank you for listening this year as well. You've all been absolutely excellent. You guys on the team as well. So for one last time, thank you so much. You've been listening to the Cast on the Sports Social Podcast Network. Vamos. Woo! Malaga. Oh, yeah.